Hi, I'm Ross the Boss. In today's interview, we have a sports columnist. He's also the voice, was the voice. We'll talk about what's going on with him and um, the World Series of Poker uh, for 17 years or maybe 18 years. Um, he also has a podcast called Gambling Mad. Let's welcome Norm Chad. Norm? Yeah, this is where my career has taken me. Thank you for having me. Norm, we've known each other a long time. We play poker almost every Friday night for many years. I'm, a, I'm upset we don't play anymore. But tell everybody about our poker games on Friday night and, and who played and how much fun we had. Tell everybody about it real quick. Yeah, it was essentially, it was an all comedians game. And I was honored and privileged to be one of the only non-comedians in the game because uh, I had met uh, a comic when I did comedy briefly back east, uh, William Stevenson who was part of the East Coast uh, Eddie Brill, famous Eddie Brill Monday night game. And there's a West Coast version of it that was started. And that's what uh, you were a part of uh, when you were uh, in the comedy business yourself uh, over uh, at the, the comedy store or wherever you were. At the improv, but keep going. At the improv. So yeah, it was it was, it was was comedians who some of them had played in the East Coast game, but most of them, some of them had gravitated to the West. And so there was a weekly Friday night game in which was uh, we hosted uh, sometime. I hosted at least half the time, I believe. Half the time. Uh, and I don't know, um, I, you were married then too. I don't know what, how's your marriage going on any, I don't know if you're still married or what's going on, but- um, but you want we, to talk about poker, not marriage. I mean, why, <laughs> why are you bringing up marriages for crying out loud? So That's we, what Ross the Boss does. I bring up everything. People want to know, Norm. They want to know if you're married or single. That's a big thing in here in Hollywood. Okay, I was actually probably between marriages at the time that we were playing uh, on off of Melrose uh, most of the time. And uh, it was a great group of comedians and a lot of them went on to great success. One of the- Yeah, we had like, I'll mention some names. We had Sarah Silverman. We had um, Bob Odenkirk played with us once in a while. His wife, Naomi played with us all the time. We, uh, Louis CK played with us. Um, we had the East Coast people, the Colin Quinn came from the East Coast and played with us. We had, we had some great, great games it was a lot of fun i do miss those days and i wish we actually if it was going on now we actually would have a tv show out of it it was that good it was that uh, much it was, it was that entertaining norman you gotta admit that it, i'm usually very gregarious at a game i didn't have to speak at that game for four or five hours because everybody was just on and uh, you mentioned we also had david cross uh, who was uh, bob's partner uh you know marty rackham uh uh uh, uh brian regan's brother uh Dennis Regan, we Dennis had Regan. Brian Dunkelman, who was the first host of American Idol. We had many, many characters, many people that came and played. Stephanie Wilder played with us. She has her own podcast. She's doing unbelievable. It was a great time. Let's talk about poker. You were the voice of the World Series of Poker on ESPN for like seven to 18 years. I mean, I would walk into a casino with you and it was like walking with Elvis. I mean, it was, you were, you were the, the, the voice and the face of poker for many years and still are. But to tell me what's going on with the, with the world series of poker. I know it's no longer an ESPN. Are you going to be involved in the CBS deal? Tell us, tell me what's going on. Yeah. It switched from ESPN to CBS sports network starting this year. And uh, I am, I am probably going to be involved, but that has not been settled yet. So I don't know my partner, Lon McCarron, who I've worked with since 2003 will be involved. Uh, because I guess he kisses ass better than I do. So uh, I hope to be back with Lon. It, it will switch over. Uh, we will do, but the live coverage of it, which has been on ESPN the last few years, it'll be on the Poker Go digital service uh, now and then shown afterwards on CBS Sports Network. So that has changed. Yeah, poker's taken a lot of blows to the head and is still standing. You know, we lost the online poker business uh, yeah. years ago. And so that, that hurt. And, and so just, and then ESPN, which was great in covering it, decided they didn't want to do any more than the, the live over the summer. So even though it's taken a lot of blows, it's still very, very popular. And I hope to be part of it again. Uh, when it, and of course, COVID hurt, we lost it last year. And so we and it's coming back. It's back September 30th. I mean, that's when they start games at the Rio hotel in Las Vegas. So if you want to play, you can sign up. If you have 10 grand, you can actually, you can actually play if you have $10,000, um, so you did it many years. Who's like one of your favorite players you had, you got to interact with, you interviewed. I mean, there's been a lot of characters that played in those games. I mean, who's your favorite? Yeah. The, 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 the old school guys were most of my favorites because they, they had lives before poker. We, again, we had the, an onslaught of online guys who just been sitting in front of their laptops from the time they were 15 years old and really don't socially interact. 
literally when they go Ross, when they go into a casino, they got on the hoodie, the headset, the earbuds, the sunglasses. I've seen it. Yeah, and they don't even talk to you at the table uh, unless they tell you that you you know you're a bad player and you don't understand the analytics of it all. So yeah, they're really friendly guys. So the older ones I have always enjoyed. So Doral Brunson is uh, you know a great storyteller and a delight to be around and one of the great all time players. So I, I was thrilled to be able to play with him twice at the World Series of Poker in an event, uh, probably a stud eight event. And it was just one of the highlights of my 15 years of playing uh, occasional events at the World Series of Poker. Uh, I also love Phil Ivey, who's one of the best players in the world, who doesn't speak when he's on camera, uh, but when he's off camera and he's with people he knows, he's very, he's very funny, he's very engaging, uh, he's got a great cutting sense of humor, and he's just... I have a lot of respect for him, Ross, because most of the players today just play one game, no limit hold'em. Guys like Phil Ivey can play all the games, and they can play high limits, they can play tournaments, they can play whatever game you put in front of them. Uh, so I have a, a lot of respect for a guy like Phil Ivey. And you actually played in the World Series of Poker, not hold'em, but you played Omaha and did pretty well. Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, actually, so besides the $10,000 buy-in you talked about, there are 60, 70, this year, 80 other events in which you can play Omaha, you can play stud, you can play deuce to seven draw. So every year I enter three or four of those events. I'll enter horse, which is the five different games, uh, Hold'em, Omaha, Raz, stud, eight or stud, eight or better. So I enter about three or four a year and I've been fortunate enough to, uh, it's hard to cash, only 15% of the field cashes. It used to be 10%. And I have cashed five or six times, five times. And I made a final table, which was a miracle. The final table was like winning a bracelet for me. So in a game that was uh, that that event was Omaha eight and Stud eight those two games I finished fifth or sixth and that was the biggest poker thrill of my life I didn't think I gave, gave a shit until I got that deep and they kept moving me to tables and I'm at the final table I go what the heck how am I at the final table hundreds and hundreds of people started this thing and I'm not as good as a lot of them but I got lucky that day and do you talk a lot at the table when you're when there I mean you're known to have these great funny comments and your comments are funny and they're different every year which is I give you a lot of credit for that. Are you like the, the life of the party there? Or are you very quiet? No, I, 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 again, I prefer cash poker, Ross, that we always play to tournament poker yep. because uh, tournament poker players are more serious and sometimes it feels like a funeral. And especially the World Series of Poker, they're acting like you know their lives are at stake. And so I take the temperature of the table and usually people are not in a, you know, in a talkative mood. But once I start going, they loosen up. I found out a, a few years ago just by accident when I handed out Starburst to people. Hey, who wants a Starburst? Who wants a Lifesaver? That loosened them up. So I always carry candy with me now. I always carry a bunch of you know, little Hershey bars. And yeah, I'm very, very active at the table. I keep telling them, you know, we're playing poker. People out there, whatever they're doing, they're not playing poker. It's like, who could enjoy themselves more than sitting here playing poker at the World Series of Poker? Loosen up, enjoy yourselves. Come on. So, yeah, I'm very talkative at the table. I like to hear that. That's nice to hear because you do have a great sense of humor. Let's get away from poker now. Let's talk something that you like to talk about is the NFL. Um, it's season starting up. I mean, we're we're in August right now. Season starts next month. Um Tom Brady won last year. I don't know your take on Tom Brady. I mean, this guy, wherever he goes, he wins. It's unbelievable. I never seen anything like this in my life. But t tell me, do you think Tom can repeat this year? You know, I've spent, I don't bet for real, but I, I write a betting column over the years. And I have spent most of the century betting against Tom Brady because <laughs> I hate the Patriots and I hate Belichick. I never hated Brady, but I just hate them. And you cannot live you go, you're, you'll be living under the bridge if you keep betting against tom brady so it's amazing what kills me about the analysts ross you know they always react to whatever just happened yesterday so i mean last year again for the third or fourth or fifth time in brady's career he got off to a really slow start oh he's over the hill look he's 43 he can't make the long pass he, he actually has... forgot it down remember last year he forgot what down it was yeah, it never happened before and everybody thought he had old timers remember all that he forgot what down it was one time one yeah. time one time in 21 years of his career. <laughs> so I, they, they, these guys, so actually Brady has brought me over. So I was actually thrilled last year, even though I was rooting for the Chiefs, of course, because I'm rooting against Brady again in the Super Bowl. I was thrilled to see Brady beat the odds again to go to a new team in Tampa Bay of all things. I mean, Tampa Bay doesn't even have a good Applebee's. He goes down to Tampa Bay and he makes the Buccaneers a winner. So I, I you know, he's he, he's got to win you over just like if you weren't a... Uh, a uh, Nadal fan or a Federer fan or, or a Djokovic fan, you got to be, those guys were incredible. So Brady is obviously the greatest football team athlete we've seen. Uh, and so I now root for him actually. And I mean, do you call him the goat? Do you think he's the greatest ever played at that quarterback position in the NFL? Yeah, everything's relative. So it's hard to compare errors and stuff, but between his 
his his his own individual success and how how well he plays the game, like as well as Peyton Manning, who's going to the Hall of Fame this weekend, plays the game, and then the amount of NFL titles he's won, it's kind of hard to argue against him at this point, and how close he was to winning other ones. I mean, he had to take up some guy miracle taking a ball off the, the his helmet, an inch off the ground to lose that one, and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it's hard to argue with his success. So, uh, and then to go to another place again, Tampa Bay. Uh, I thought Sam Weiss was still coaching Tampa Bay. Tampa <laughs> Bay wins the, the Super Bowl with him. It's just amazing. So, yeah, if he's not the GOAT, he's in the short term. I mean, it's de- I mean, it's definitely a great story. And, you know, I'm not a big Tom Brady guy either, but I do root for him now. He's like 44 years old, I believe. I mean, I want him to play till, I want him to play till he's 50. I don't know if he can do it, but if there's one that, that can, and that offensive line is so stacked, they protect him very, very well. And that's why they won the Super Bowl. I think he has a shot to play to play till he's 50. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I, I don't know what you think, what age he'll retire, but I feel it'd be closer to 45 yeah. than 50. We'll see what I, happens. I, I, obviously, he's trying to play as long as he can. He's had inc- He had one year where he lost the whole year because of injury. He was very lucky injury-wise. I do believe, just like the Jordan rules, well, there's a there's an NFL referee rule with Tom Brady. Like if, if you if you whisper a sweet nothing into his ear, you are flagged for a personal foul. You can't get near the guy. And most of his career, no one got near him anyway. But no. he does get that benefit, as you know. But I am rooting for him to play till 45, till 50, if he can. So that would be great to see. It would. And I want to talk to you about the whole NFL stand on vaccinations. I know you had COVID last year. I know it wasn't pleasant time for you. I know it was bad. A lot of, not a lot, but a good percentage of NFL players are not going to get vaccinated. They were very public about it. Uh, Cole Beasley was was very was very vo- boisterous about it. So was Hopkins, but they're going to have wristbands like Ross the Boss wears to identify who's vaccinated and who's not. What what do you think about all that stuff? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it, COVID's been as tricky of a health situation as we have had in our lifetime. It's a very difficult public health crisis. So the vaccination, of course, is supposed to be a personal decision. Uh, If there's some reason that you cannot get vaccinated or will not get vaccinated, I understand that. But it does affect public health. It's, for instance, an NFL player is not going to, is generally is not going to get very, very sick and pass away. But him having it might give it to somebody else that could get very sick and pass away. So I I understand the, the need that from a public health standpoint and a social standpoint, that as many people should be vaccinated or masked as a safety precaution as possible until they tell us otherwise. I don't see it as a political issue. I see it as we, you know, better safe than sorry. So if you got to wear a mask for a little longer because it might help the, you know, your family, your coworkers, your your friends, you probably should. It's a difficult situation for the NFL, but I think they have the right idea. I was wrong about this, Ross. I would have thought that the NFL would be a super spread, a super spreader every week because of the way they interact with each other and they sweat on each other and they tackle each other. And that wasn't the case last year. So I was wrong on that. But from a safety standpoint, I believe they have the right idea that if you're not vaccinated, uh, you probably should, you know, you should probably should not be playing. I agree. I mean, they do have, I mean, the, you get tested every day when you go to work at the NFL, when you walk in, they test you and they, and every day it, it, you know, it doesn't matter. They, they test you. They even test sometimes after practice. It doesn't, you know, they're, they're very strict about the whole testing thing about COVID. I mean, do you think it's going to affect games this year in NFL? Do you think we'll see some forfeits? Do you think that we won't see fans in the stands by the end of the season? What, what's your prediction on the whole COVID situation in the NFL for the season coming up? Okay, again, since we're not doctors, we're not scientists, and we cannot project where, where you know, like the current variant is going to go. Right now, it's projecting in a bad way. It, we're, we're again going towards, oh my goodness, you know, uh, this, uh, businesses are going to be affected. You have to wear masks indoor. So I don't know what's going to happen with the NFL. I don't know if it's going to be as extreme as you just mentioned. There will be players that will have to sit out. We had players sit out last year. You know, we, we I had remember. quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, we had Lamar Jackson had had COVID and uh, uh, Superman, uh, the, the the Panthers. Uh, what, what, what? Cam Newton, Cam Newton had COVID yeah. and he came back and he was never the same. He was like, I don't know if you watched him play, but it was like, he didn't know what was going on. He was like in a different world and it, was, yeah. it did affect the Patriots season. They, I don't think they finished 500. Uh, so look at, look at, uh, look at, look at baseball this year. You have had, you have had a couple of games that have been postponed because of COVID. So this can happen. We, we it happened in all the leagues where you, again, if the variant gets worse and more people get infected, you are going to have play affected and you are, you are going to have guys sitting out if it continues to, to project downward. 
I mean, my take is this. I don't know. You know, my take is basically the NFL is a business. They're, they're your employer. They tell you what they want. And the NFL wants you to get vaccinated. And you being an employee, you're not bigger than NFL. You know, Hopkins is not bigger than NFL. Cole Beasley is not bigger than NFL. If you want to sit out and not play, that's your choice. You know, and the NFL, they want to take safety precautions. I understand for a lot of reasons, like you mentioned, but I just feel that if the player does not want to get vaccinated, I feel they should, they should not play. I mean, I feel they should, they should not play for the NFL. I don't think it's for them. Um, but that's my take. Um, I don't think people are looking at the huge picture. They're looking at the small picture, but long story short, I just feel the NFL um, has to take a stand. They have to, they have to at least have guide players. Yes. Get the vaccination. Um, at least get the Johnson and Johnson one, which is like getting a flu shot. Um, it's, there's no DNA stuff that goes on with that shot. Um, but there are players that they don't want to get it. So we'll see, we'll see what happens and there are fines involved and there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen. A lot of questions I have that they don't even answers for. I try to find questions on, on players getting COVID. Do they get paid? I, they don't know. They have no idea what goes on with the NFL, you know, with the rules. So with the NFL coming up season, Norm, you're really good with predictions and players and rookies and everything else that's going on. What teams should we take an eye out? What teams do you think are going to improve a lot this year that we should be aware of? Well, you know, it, it pains me to say this since I'm a, a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And even though they're no longer in the, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Uh, the, the Bengals, uh, if, if I were, you know, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, I would actually take the season total of the Bengals there in, a, in, in, and, and go over with them. The Bengals are, you know, things change quickly in the NFL. You know, we've had a lot of teams go from last to first. It, it, it happens all the time. And the Bengals, if you look at the Bengals division, you go, oh, my goodness. I mean, look at the other three teams in that division. It's, it's stacked. At Baltimore, where you got Cleveland, who's who's like when they playoffs last year, you got Pittsburgh, who's always in the playoffs. I mean, that's the best division in football. Yeah, but we it, keep, keep going. So I, I, I without knowing what's going to happen with uh, Baltimore, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. I do know just just the the the, 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 the odds of this stuff always happening that one of them is going to fall terribly. That, that you know it might be injuries, just might the, the team just so they're they're not going to be all three as good as you think they are, and two of them might be uh, uh, under expectations. So the Bengals who have who have the right guy now at quarterback, I'm trusting they have the right that they're having the right coach. The Bengals number is really low as it, as you expect it to be in, in the toughest division in football. I think it's seven would, right now. Yeah. Uh, I would go over on the Bengals, which is kind of an odd sp spot because, again, most people say, look, they got to play those those teams six times. Yeah. But, yeah, I would go over on the Bengals, and I expect them to be a surprise. And uh, I, I just hope they stay healthy, and I, I hope I'm, I don't look like an idiot there. But, yeah, I, I generally look to, to, to go the opposite of what most people are thinking because, again, most of the most of the public – will go with whatever they saw last week. And so they go for, you know, national teams, they go for favorites. You know, I would have taken, I would have taken the, the Packers on the over when it looked like everyone thought Rodgers was leaving. And actually the, 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 the Broncos line went way up because there was always obviously going to Denver. Of course he wasn't going to Denver. So the, the, the Packers line was fairly low at 10, 10 and a half. At 10 and a half, they're a bargain. I mean, he wins 10 games every year and this, this time it's a 17 game season. So yeah, I would expect the Packers to be able to win again, 11 or 12 games. I, I think the Packers would be tough. I mean, last year, Ross the boss gave, gave his gambling predictions and I was 71% with my prediction. So that's not bad at all. Norm you Chad. were 71%. I was 71% and that's tested. So come at me, Norm Chad, if this season, if you want to have some good competition with, with sports, with sports and predicting games, come after Ross the boss. I don't want to, I don't want to argue with you, particularly in football, but if I just, if I just looked at any given year in your life, outside of football, chances are you're not going to be right 71% of the time during the course of the calendar year on stuff. Well, I had a good season. I don't know what to tell you. So let's talk AFC. Do you, st do you still think Kansas City is the, the team to beat? I mean, do you think like Baltimore or even the Bills can can overtake that the AFC this year? With What's your prediction in the AFC? Then we'll, then we'll talk about the NFC. Yeah, the, the, you know, Mahomes is, is a generational player. And as long as he stays healthy and yep. he seems to have his head screwed on correctly, uh, again, they got off to, I remember last year, again, they, they were having games in which they were playing down to the level of their competition. Oh, the, the Raiders. Yep. Lost, yeah. They've lost their mojo. The, what the Raiders did to them. People always, again, react to what happened yesterday. Uh, in the long run, Mahomes is going to be really, really solid. So yeah, I would think the chiefs are the team to beat. 
I, I hope that, you know, it was great to see the bills rise last year. That was, that was really, really fun. fun. And it's, you know, it was, the, 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 we haven't gone to the NFC yet, but one of the things I liked uh, particularly about the NBA this year, it's just, it's just nice to see three or four teams make the, 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 the conference finals that you haven't seen for a while. It's just nice to mix it up. Atlanta, right? the Knicks, it was unbelievable. The NBA, I was, I was very shocked. I was very happy to see the Knicks and even the Hawks to have a good season last yeah, season. So that, that's just, that's just pleasant. It's, it's great to see new personalities come yeah. out. You see a, a Devin Booker, uh, and, and a guy like that go, oh, they're finally rising to the challenge. So I hope we have a couple of players and a couple of teams that year that we can't anticipate do that in either conference. So let's talk NFC. Who's your pick in the NFC? I like the Rams. I like Stafford going there. We'll see what happens. But who, who do you think's your who, who? What team do you think will rise from the top to take the NFC? Yeah, it's it's it, the NFC is really a mishmash. And again, let's throw out Brady for a second. Uh, and I, I, again, again, I. I I know it's going to be a weird situation, but the Packers with Aaron Rodgers, uh, after all they've been through and the whole soap opera, it's still Aaron Rodgers, who, again, the last couple of years, has just you just look at the numbers of his last five years and you go, wow, the, the, the quarterback to interception ratio, the, 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 the passer rating. He remains without a lot of weapons sometimes around him. You know, one of the more creative quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. So I still think the Packers are set up to obviously make it to the conference championship game. And I would be disappointed if they didn't. Talking about the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, last season in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. You think so? Oh, is it his last season in Green Bay? Do, 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 do you he'll come back? I mean, he, right now he's saying, we'll see how the season goes. We'll see what happens. He's not saying it's his last season in Green Bay, but he restructured his contract. So this could be his last season in Green Bay. And I want to yeah. see if you agree I, I, with me or you're against wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't. Uh, I hope it's not. Uh, and I, I, I know he's, you know, he's, he's not taking out a 30 year fixed, uh, <laughs> fixed home loan on his next green Bay property, but yeah, I, it, it, he's a favorite to be out of green Bay after this year, but people thought he was a favorite to be out of green Bay just as recently as six or eight weeks ago. So I don't know if it's his last season. I hope he's staying there. Uh, but again, there might be too many bridges broken or whatever. I agree. I, I agree. I don't see him playing in Green Bay next year. Jordan Love, who is their first round draft pick, the main reason why he wants to leave is because they drafted him as the first round draft pick a couple of years ago. He didn't even suit up for one game last year, which is unbelievable. They they drafted this guy first. He doesn't even suit up. Okay. And he and he's gonna take me, he's gonna take Aaron Rodgers' spot. Are they crazy? Well, I don't know if they're crazy, but I do think Aaron, if he was hypersensitive about that, and he I was. Okay. Well, okay. Come on, Aaron. You know, buck up, man up. He's Jordan Love. Who the heck is Jordan Love? <laughs> you know, he, he, they, they send him out for Starbucks. So why he gets upset that they 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 hire the next quarterback for the future? Every team does that. I can't believe he was hypersensitive about that. Well, they could have got a wide receiver to help him. Oh, no question. That he should be hypersensitive about. That, that, look, why don't you help me with a wide receiver? You never do that. Why are you going out and going to quarterback? I understand that, but there's ways to handle that privately. And the fact that that spilled out publicly, I think he, I just think he had jitters about hosting Jeopardy. And, uh, and he, didn't get, he didn't get the job either. So don't worry. Don't worry, Aaron Rodgers. You're not hosting Jeopardy this year. I went to the, one of the producers that produced the show for many years. He got the job. Sorry, Aaron. The, the guy who was hiring the people got the job? The guy who was looking he at wasn't hiring. He was the executive producer. He hosted. He actually was really good. I'm not. Was this, good? It, okay. He was. He did a great job, and I I agree with who they picked. The guy they picked did, was unbelievable. I mean, he was hands down the best guest oh, host they you. had. You know talent. So this Mike Richards. Yeah, is a, uh, he, he he's make a good yes. Jeopardy. They they made the right decision. Um, okay. I I like Aaron Rodgers, but he wasn't a great host. Sorry, you know. Okay. There you go. So let's talk about gambling, Matt. You do a podcast. It's very, very comedic, very funny. Your last subject was about bowling and the Olympics. I mean, let's talk about that a little bit. That made me laugh. Um, to tell the audience about why why bowling should be in the Olympics. First, first of all, you know, we, 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 as you know, we have a lot of pursuits in the Olympics that a lot of people <laughs> pursue, both in the Winter Olympics and the Summer Games. You know, we, we don't have a lot of people, you know, doing uh, ski shooting or in the winter, show, whatever that is. Uh, we don't have a lot of people doing equestrian or show jumping like Springsteen's kid. Uh, bowling is one of the most popular sports, not only in America, but around the world. So the fact and they try to get bowling in like eight or 12 years ago. 
but bowling goes way back. Bowling, bowling goes, goes, as I mentioned this, it does go back to the stone age. There is actually, I know I was just kidding about Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble uh, playing in their bowling league at the bedrock AMF lanes, but there was bowling going on. Of course they had rocks. They were bowling. They were knocking stuff over. So the fact that they don't have bowling to me is an embarrassment for the Olympics. They have so many pursuits that nobody plays bowling people, bowl, people bowl. They have golf in there. I'm man. A- I agree with you. And they're having break dancing in the next Olympics in Paris. They're going to introduce break dancing as a sport. They have trampoline as a sport. They have rock climbing as a sport. They have badminton as a sport. They have even like, they have the it's skateboarding. I mean, I, I enjoyed skateboarding as a kid, but it should be in the Olympics. I don't know about that, Norman. I agree with you. I think bowling deserves a spot, especially if golf has a spot. I mean, it makes no sense. I think it'd be fun to see all the different characters from all the different countries bowl. I think it'd be fun. I also like any sport in which you can keep score without judges. So as much as I respect, say, figure skating and gymnastics, they're very athletic. They're very artistic. That doesn't necessarily make them, you know, obviously people can disagree with me, a sport. And people just judging on, you know, how they did that double, triple, blah, blah, blah. In bowling, you got to score at the end. All right. You either, you know, you got a 182, you got a 212, you got a 113. So I prefer sports in which like track and field where it's the fastest person wins. It's not somebody judging. Uh, Boxing, they judge, but you can knock the other person out. So bowling, you got to score at the end of the day. It's not the Russian judge screwing you over, the American judge screwing over the Iraqi guy. (laughs) I agree. Now, something I do miss from the Olympics And is Bob Costas. I mean, when Bob Costas hosted the Olympics, I really enjoyed what he did. And he did such a great job and people never really gave him that much credit. And now him not hosting it, I feel there's a big like gap missing. And I know you have a Bob Costas story that happened to you years ago. Um, Why don't you tell our audience about it? Well, I will agree with you, by the way, that Costas, you know, Costas turns out to be one of the you know, most talented sportscasters of his generation. And he can do studio, he can do play by play, he can do, obviously he's hosted late night television, which has nothing to do with sports. So he's very, very versatile. Uh, and, and he's, you know, he's the voice of the Olympics for the last, he did 10 or 12 or 14 of them. He became the Jim McKay of his generation. And I think he does a terrific job on that. That being said, uh, uh, he's a rather, he's, he's a little, he's a little thin skinned. So if you're critical of him, he's not always happy. So I used to write a, a sports television column, uh, both in the Washington Post and then the National Sports Daily, which lasted for about 15 minutes uh, back in the early 90s. And I, I wrote about Bob Costas uh, more than once. And I wrote a column about him once, uh, actually, where I went and I, I spent some time with him in New York. And I wrote a really positive column about him that was running, let's say, on a Friday morning in the Washington Post. And I was asleep one morning. I actually worked late night shifts at the post uh, as a copy editor. So I, I wouldn't get to sleep till four or five in the morning. And my phone woke, uh, phone woke me up at around eight or eight thirty uh, in the morning. I answered the phone and I said, hello. And the person on the other line said, uh, Norman Chad. And I said, yes. He said, Bob Costas, you are an asshole. I go, uh, excuse me. And first of all, I thought it was a friend of mine. I thought it was a friend of mine imitating Costas because he would call me up and try to pretend he was Dick Vitale or Frank Gifford. And it didn't, I said, God, I can't believe that got Pete, but you no, know, it was Costas. I, it was Costas. He said, you are an asshole. And they explained to me that while the, the article was 94% positive that I mentioned to, to belittle him, I mentioned his height. You don't mention and, his height. You don't uh, mention his height. And I mentioned his height. And this actually happened another time, Ross, where I did mention his height. And then uh, the NBC PR person called. They said they want to run a correction. Bob says that he's 5'8". He's not 5'6 and a half. And they said, <laughs> FYI, he is 5'6 and a half. He's just crazy about his height. So he's calling me to tell me I'm an asshole because his height, because I try to make him look like he's a short person. And that was the intent of my whole column. My goodness, I celebrated him the whole column. I usually bury people. And he's calling me at 8.30 in the morning to tell me I'm an asshole. Even if I am an asshole, I don't want to be told that at 8.30 in the morning. Well, you know what, Norm? I want to end with that story. I, I love hearing stories when celebrities have to even call people and backtrack and are upset about something that makes me happy because it shows them, it shows them, it shows you that they're a human being, you know, it shows people are human and they're not above anything. And I like how Bob Costas called you personally, he didn't have his guy call you, but he called you personally and had something on his, you know, on his mind. He wanted to talk to you about it. And as you know, I worked for Jay Leno for 15 years and Jay would come to my office and he would say, Ross, do you have so-and-so's phone number? He'd said something bad about me on the radio. I want to call him and ask him about it. 
and wow. it, it's the same mindset. I mean, yeah. it's the mindset. It's like, you don't get mad. You get, you, you call the person, you confront them. And that's what he did. And you know, I commend him on that. I'm happy. Commend, I'm happy he called you. You know, well, I want to know who gave him my phone number, even though I, I was listed in the phone book at that time. <laughs> I, I don't think it's that hard to find Norm Chad's phone number. I think it's a very easy, easy thing. Uh, I think you can look on bathroom walls. I think you can call okay. anybody and find your number. It's very easy, Norm. But thank you for coming on, Ross the Boss. This was great. This was fun. I want to have you back on during football season. I want to go against you one week with picks and see who wins. I think that would be fun and educating for the audience. Um, I'm Ross the Boss, and I love talking sports with you, cowboy. <laughs>